You can already get an amazing crossbow very early in Dying Light 2 if you make the right choices. And trust me, you want to get it as soon as possible. There are also some main story unlocks that will make your life way easier later on in the game. So there's no need to waste your time at the beginning. Just a ton to go over. And yes, I want to start with the PK crossbow. Which can very easily clear renegades in larger outposts. There are many bold options that all have their own effect. And I now got it at character level 3 because I made the right choices. While Dennis, who of course also works for the channel, he went with the survivors each time and now got this revive instead where if you die from fall damage in a survivor zone, an NPC comes to rescue. And this is more than a 5 minute cooldown and sure it can be handy, but the crossbow is of course way better. So don't make the same mistake. Although, if you did, there is still a chance to get the weapon. This semi-automatic crossbow is namely a reward for giving 4 towers or stations to the Peacekeeper faction. And if you only side with them from the start, you can already get this weapon very early on. The first time you get to make a choice like this is during the Water Tower main mission in Old Philidor. Then, the moment you reach the city center, you get access to a mission called A Place to Call Home. And if you were keeping track of all the Dying Light gameplay before launch, then you might remember that this was the mission that Techland uploaded to their YouTube channel. Here you meet some peacekeepers before an electrical station, and then after activating it, you can give it to one of the two factions. So once again, choose left here, so you're closer to getting the crossbow. Because if you're like me, always chose the peacekeepers during these two main stories missions then you only need two extra towers to get the crossbow and there are actually two of them very easily accessible after you just got to the city center the wharf water tower which is over here on the map and the saint paul electrical station if you complete both of them give them to the peacekeepers then you get this amazing crossbow relatively early on in the game. But don't worry though if you chose to go with the survivors as well because there are two other towers in the open world. The Houndveld Electrical Station over here in Old Villador and you also have the St. Paul Water Tower which is over here. But these have higher stamina requirements. And there's also another tower during the main mission number 16 called Broadcast. Like there are seven locations like this that you can assign to factions just make sure that at least four of them go to the peacekeepers to get the crossbow. Because it makes your life way easier. You can shoot enemies from far away without them being able to do anything back. Or throw molotovs during the military convoys. And then finish the enemies off more easily with this weapon. Also amazing against the random encounters where you have to chase a target. Because one regular bolt can be enough to take them out. Or you can even kill these targets before they are able to run away. And yes, this with the toxic Dart dealing damage over time. Also nice against the boulders at night, although I sometimes took them out instantly as well. But by far the best bolt is the impact variant. Yes, you already see it in action here. I will go more in depth on it and share way more tips also on how to easily get some inhibitors and way, way more. Of course, if you like the video so far, then leaving a like on it would really help me out and subscribe for way more Dying Light 2 videos like this. So yeah, with the impact bolt, you can blast enemies away. So smart to line up these shots perfectly. So you send the enemies flying off high high rooftops and yeah you can be campy and hit them one by one as they climb up the ladder or you can also send enemies against each other which deals damage and can kill them too or keep an eye on these environmental traps and just blast them towards death for an insta kill and they can also still loot them you also have a freeze bolt that deals some damage and freezes the enemies in place so you can switch to a melee weapon for example to easily take them out. There's also a stun bolt with a similar purpose and I found out that the lacerating bolt that deals bleeding damage over time was really good against the GRE anomaly. I just shot one bolt and it would like eat away the health from the boss. It's super powerful this crossbow so totally try and get it. It can of course also not break which is nice but yeah have to craft these bolts and for that you need feathers. A tip I mentioned in my previous video which I will link to at the end of this one is that you want to check the resource offering from vendors often and just buy most of it because it's really cheap. And if you've already done that then you most likely already got a lot of feathers because they are for sale quite often. You can also find them for example over here on the map on one of the rooftops in Old Philidor. 
So, totally keep an eye on these birdhouses as well. But overall, having a lot of windmills unlocked, so you have many different fenders where you can buy the resources for these bolts is really the way to go. Another mistake you don't want to make is to look for inhibitors when you just reached the city center because later on in the game you get the GRE detector which will make your life way easier. So no story spoilers of course but at one point during the broadcast main mission you will need to activate a radio tower and if you do that in combination with the GRE detector you will see icons of these inhibitors on the map. So after that main mission you only got one radio tower but there are more in the world like for example this one over here on the map. Unlocking it is basically a more challenging platforming puzzle and then afterwards you can spot even more of these icons so you can more easily find the stamina and health upgrades. Again especially in the city center it can be really hard to see where the inhibitors are when you get the notification. Well right now you will immediately see an icon and know if you have to look above you or below which is incredibly nice. Another thing you really want to do as fast as possible which I did not do until much later on in the game is at least upgrade your lockpick once. It's really easy to get the five uncommon trophies from Howlers during night for example and then your lockpicks are way more durable so you can more quickly open doors or stashes without having to use more of these lockpicks. It's all smart to upgrade your glider as fast as possible. You get this after reaching the city center from a main mission and you can upgrade it at a craftmaster and need military tech for this which you get from airdrops and you find one above the camp from Jack and Joe over here on the map and you clear this for the raid main story mission. And the thing about military tech is that it respawns. So if you go back after making some progress in the game, you can get this resource again to more easily upgrade the paraglider. And of course, way more of these airdrops. I will also leave a link to, by the way, all the towers I mentioned in this video and all the airdrop locations in the video description. A link to Powerpicks, this article, with everything you need to know. So you can more easily get the military tech and upgrade the glider also as soon as possible. And that's not, by the way, the only loot in a chest that respawns. Also, every time I go to the metro, downtown court over here on the map I spawn next to a chest that I can open almost every time I think this also is linked to progressing the game and I got some artifact lags here and mostly some other great gear items so totally check this festival point often as well and don't forget the chest subscribe of course for way more dying light 2 videos if you haven't already a like on the video would really help me out and totally check out our previous video on early items you want to get as soon as possible by clicking on the screen. Thanks a lot for watching and I will speak to you in the next one. Goodbye.